Hello, welcome back to the Motherhood Collective Co. Hi. We've missed you guys and each other because we also haven't seen each other. I know. <laughs> it's been a rough few weeks. Oh my gosh, so rough. <laughs> Did you see see the message we got? And someone was like, I hope you guys are okay. No. I miss your podcast. <laughs> we're here. Uh, <clears throat> it's been It was literally, we were time. supposed to record two weeks ago on Friday. And I texted Jesse, like, in the, it was like one o'clock in the morning. And I think I just said, like, sick, don't come. Because I was, like, yeah, throwing it was literally up. literally that. Literally throwing up every yeah. 30 minutes for a full 24 hours. Just dry heaving. It was awful. Awful. I haven't had the stomach flu since Brady and I first got married. And we went home to Missouri and stayed for 10 days in my parents house the first day we got there he got it and my my parents house is like this old country house it was my grandparents house Mm -hmm. and it's just like one it's like the OG open living concept before Mm -hmm. it was popular and so like the guest bathroom is like kind of by the guest rooms but that's kind of right off the dining room Mm. and so here's Brady he's like pretty much we are married but he didn't really have much interaction with my parents before Uh we got married and he's like just pooping in the toilet puking in the sink (laughs) while we're eating dinner (laughs) That we both sucks. got so sick. Oh, that sucks. But that was the first time I've had any kind of stomach. And it's the first time I've had anything like that since I've been pregnant or breastfeeding. Hmm. Having the flu and breastfeeding, because any, any liquid going into your body Ugh. is immediately going to breast milk. Also, I stopped producing milk. It was I scary. Know, which I'm, I, I was like nervous. Mm. Is this going to come back? What's going to happen? Yeah. Thank goodness that Lily can like eat food. I know. Or else she would have been more miserable than she needed to be. Anyways. And then, you know, last week. You have had uh, issues. So, <laughs> we just- so many issues. <laughs> Chase got super sick. And so I was like, okay, you need to stay away from the kids if you can. Because mm-hmm. it was very respiratory. And if anybody like knows me, I've talked about how nervous we get about s- respiratory stuff with Sunny. Because yeah. she always ends up in the ER because of um, croup. And uh, that's all. I've thought about talking about that more in depth on our podcast too. Because I just feel like nobody really understands what croup is. <laughs> I just want to like share because I also just don't know if anybody else has experienced it to like the extreme that I have and has that like therefore dealt with the anxiety of your kids getting sick like I have I don't know like I envy people who don't really care if their kids get sick or not like not that they don't care but they're kind of like well what up kids eat eat, eat dirt that kind of phrase Mm -hmm. like I wish I could be like that but like my kid ends up in the ER yeah I'm more like that we're a little because anytime Noah gets sick it's just like literally he got the same flu that took me I couldn't get out of bed for at least 48 hours. He mm-hmm. had it for six hours and he was fine. Yeah. Fine. I know. So I don't, yeah, I'm that I person. Know. I don't really worry about not getting sick. I know. Yeah. So that's like, that's just kind of hard. So anyways, um, so I basically was like alone on my own with the kids for like six days um, while he was getting better. And then on day six, the kids got sick, exactly what he had. <laughs> And so I already was like sleep deprived, exhausted, just like completely at the end of my rope. And then they got sick and, um, turns out it's like a virus human. What's it? What did I text? Nemato. Paranuma virus, human para. Basically. Pneumo. Pneumo is lungs as P and uh, anyway, I think it's, it's, it's paranuma. <laughs> it's it's in the it's the exact same class of viruses that RSV is. So it's basically just like a different name for RSV, um, which I just found out yesterday that he had that. I'm kind of glad I didn't know for like the first five days of his illness because it was like I don't know it was it was scary because he would like wake up in the middle of the night and like he'd be coughing for so long mm. that he'd almost like s- like stop breathing for a second and I'd have to like get up and like take him to like it was just. I didn't sleep for like four days that when he was sick and he's still sick. It's just Mm. awful. He's so fussy. He's so upset. That's why I brought him to urgent care yesterday. I was like, something's wrong with him. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, it's just exhausting and we're doing our best and I don't know. I'm just, I'm wanting a break, but then I'm like, I'm moving in two weeks and there's not really a break in sight. (laughs) Moving was so rough because, and I feel like you're like me. It's like, this feeling of you're not in a house and you're not in a home mm-hmm. and it is like it's all your it consumes you mm-hmm. to get everything unpacked yeah and to like make it feel like a home because mm-hmm. you can't rest until you have a home mm-hmm. to rest in and also just like <clears throat> grieving the house we're in right now mm-hmm. like oh i just feel so emotional i'm like i'm grieving that i'm grieving like we're probably giving our ducks away and like i'm so attached to them them. i think we will we at least have to give them away for when we move in but like all we keep having to sign more and more paperwork the more like closer we get to our closing date and it just feels like it's going to be like the impossible task to keep them 
I don't know. I just feel like I'm going through a lot of emotions and feelings and things and a lot yeah. more that's I'm not even talking about right now. But yeah, um, but we're like real human beings mm-hmm. who um, this is not like our job. This is like mm-hmm. something we do because we love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so And we do. And Amanda was like, I know you've had like an awful week. Do you want me to just like record alone? And I'm like, no, like this helps me get out of my head and out of my mm-hmm. space and just like pour into something, you yeah. know? 100 percent and we have our book club this weekend so that is also something to really look forward to and it's like yeah. just low-key because we're not having to like do anything we're just going to show up and we're going to talk about this yeah um and if you want to join our book club and you don't live here or you do live here and you didn't make the sign up because it was kind of limited space since we're going to be in our homes um in the future then you can still follow along get on our facebook page we weren't super active with this book because you know all of the things we were just talking about (laughs) but i think like after our first meeting girls get to see each other we can be on the facebook page a little bit more actively talking about the book we're reading asking questions yeah um so get just get on the link in our bio on Mm -hmm. our instagram page and there's a link to the book club page and you can join it absolutely we'll start posting like what book we're reading and like yeah. I said just points of discussion throughout the month mm-hmm. maybe we can make it a, an effort to do I know yeah we need to be yeah um just to connect with you guys a yeah. little bit more and mm-hmm. make it a little bit more personal yeah. and we have on the docket um the intrusive thoughts episode for you that is not happening today because Jesse hasn't slept <laughs> And she wants to actually <laughs> form very nice, cohesive yeah, thoughts. Yeah, I'm like, so. I want to be on like one side of on the coin and not the other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like if we talked about intrusive thoughts right now, I would just be fueling the fire. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So we're not going to do that today, but yeah. we have all of your questions and it is coming up either next episode or the yeah. episode after. Um, so we kind of thought we'd talk a little bit about, we've had in the last couple of weeks, something like kind of come up for me at mm-hmm. least and then I think it maybe brought some stuff up for you mm-hmm. and I'll preface it with a couple of weeks ago it was like maybe a month ago mm-hmm. I God was seriously stirring my trauma there's no other explanation for the amount of things that kept coming in yeah. that was like bringing up my sexual abuse mm-hmm. all within like a week it wasn't just one thing it was one thing after the other after the other after the other and I was just totally. so uncomfortable yeah And the more like I reflect on that, the more I'm kind of thinking maybe it was he was like trying to make me a little bit more aware of the spirit because then the next thing that hit me was I need to get my kids off of social media Mm -hmm. like now, right now. I need to do that. And I kind of was having those feelings on our, was it our last episode? Yeah, you've been, I mean, you have like personally, I've watched you wrestle with that since you've had Lily. Yeah, since I've had Lily. Yes, I think having a girl being a victim of abuse and then having a girl and then, you know, you seeing just her little body and it just is like, yeah, it's (laughs) it's really hard to be like to have CPTSD and like just have this trigger that is your daughter who you love so much. It's kind of been a lot, Mm -hmm. but um, I have been wrestling with that. And then Mm -hmm. I finally jumped the gun. I don't know what happened, but I had this feeling that because you know we've got 12 something thousand followers on our page yeah and i don't know who, who was it was it i don't know somebody was like that's like red that's more than red rocks stadium oh and my heart just sunk because yeah. i'm like wait what yeah and it is because red right. rock seats ten thousand. Mm. and um and then i just had this distinct feeling like there's somebody that's either going to be coming onto your page, your personal page, or they're already there that does not have good intentions Mm -hmm. and it freaked me out. And I took them off Mm -hmm. to the best of my ability. I took them off. Mm -hmm. And so that's been different. Yeah. 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 And it's, (laughs) I mean, I, I remember pretty distinctly when I decided I was not going to post Sunny on social media anymore. And if you've been on our podcast for a while, you know. Yeah, we did a whole episode yeah, about yeah. social media. Mm-hmm. I had a different stance then mm-hmm. than I do now. And I, my stance or Jesse's stance has nothing yeah. to do with the stance you need to have. Oh, no, no, not at all. But um, I was at a music, like it was like a small music festival in Parker um, in line for a food truck. And we had both the dogs and Sunny and Chase and... I don't know what I was doing. I think maybe Chase was going to another food truck and I was kind of like had my back a little turned to Sunny and I was kind of yelling at Chase like, hey, can you get me blah, 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 blah. And I hear Sunny like talking to someone and they said her name and I turn around and it's like this younger couple and she knows exactly who Sunny is. I have no idea who these people are. Mm -hmm. She knows the name of my dogs. She knows my name the minute I turn around. Oh my gosh, like I've always wanted to meet you. All this stuff. And I'm like, I follow you on Instagram. 
starts asking me all these questions about Sunny. She knew that what we had just done for her birthday party. She mm. knew, um, you know, that we had started homeschooling. She all this stuff, you know, and she had the best of intentions. There's nothing. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I have nothing against that that woman. It just made but you realize. I got in the car that night and I had this pit in my stomach yeah. over the fact that like. I was given this child to like steward and protect. Yeah. And I'm inadvertently and unknowingly kind of like throwing her to the wolves as far as like whoever wants to know her can know her. Yeah. And she, it doesn't need to be mutual. It doesn't need to be consensual. Like know what you want to know about her. Like look at her face as long as you want to stare at her body as long as you want to like, and you don't even like ever even have to be in her presence. And, um, I went home and, uh, I just decided I wasn't going to share her anymore. Um, I made like, I went through my Facebook friends and I deleted Mm -hmm. every person that I didn't know. And I was sick over the amount of people that I don't know on my Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. And most of them were men. Yep. I just did the exact same thing. And like, there were on my Instagram. I went through and cause Brady was like, you know, he's kind of like, Oh Amanda, like, don't be so fearful. Mm -hmm. It's okay. People Mm -hmm. love it. Like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, let's just look at my followers. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of followers. It's not like Jesse has 30 something thousand <laughs> followers on her Instagram page. I don't, I'm like basically a private profile except for I'm public. Mm-hmm. And, but I had like, I don't know, 2000 followers and we're going through it. And s- a lot of them, a lot of them were men and men with like no profile picture. Yes. Yeah. Or like nasty names. Yeah. Or they're straight up like profiles with pornographic images yes. in the icon that yes. like can follow you or message you. And I've gotten those messages before, but yeah. like, yeah. And, and, and or like, like people seeing your story. Have you ever gotten people that seeing your story and it, the, their name is like a check my DM 18 yes. and over. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like looking at a mm-hmm. story of my child. Yeah. 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 And mm-hmm. it's just, it's terrifying. And like, it, it, yeah, I don't know. I, I, at the time was like, I'm deleting all of these people on my Facebook. Um, And then I made a private album for Sunny at the Mm -hmm. time. So I have like hand selected people who can see the photos I post on Facebook. So if you ever see a picture of my kid on Facebook, it's because you're part of a private group Mm -hmm. of people who can see them. Um, I went through and made my entire profile private. Um, And then I started only posting to my close friends on Instagram, my kid. Mm -hmm. Um, I never felt the need to like go back and delete everything because my mindset was kind of like, well, it's already out there. Moving forward. (laughs) So what am I going to do about it? But moving forward, I can make a different decision. Mm -hmm. Um, And it wasn't until our conversation a couple weeks ago where you said like, you felt like maybe that stirring in the Lord being like, there could, and, and, and let's just be honest. Like our podcast is like, it can be controversial as kind. That's what my thought was. Like somebody could come Mm -hmm. onto our page. And like as kind as like out like forthright as we, we try to be like, there's still going to be things that we're going to say that are going to rub people the wrong way Yeah, and could rub the wrong person the wrong way. And just anytime you're putting yourself out there, you're, you know, at risk of that. And like we were talking about a famous like parenting influencer who recently yes. I have has never been... seen her and we're not going to share that no. because that would just be contributing yeah, to the right. problem. Absolutely. I had never seen that page before and it has recently went a little viral because this mother is posting things of her child purposely trying. I mean, I don't know if it's purposely. I can't assume her intentions. Oh, we're talking way. about different things, but yes, talk oh, about that first. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, but what I would say is purposely because it looks purposeful. I mean, is, it's her income. Yes. So let's just say like it for what it is. Like she's like making the real covers of her daughter, like with her legs spread. And those are the ones that get all the views. She knows she's well aware. Like <sighs> she is well aware of the, the trauma she's causing her daughter. Yeah. Authorities have been contacted. People have been it's reporting. Bizarre. I've never seen her before. No. And, and then the thing that grossed me out so bad was like, she, this person was going on her page and she was blocking out all the images. So she was trying to not contribute to the problem, but she was, Going through a page and she was like, oh, the ones that are more innocent don't have any like comments or saves. Saves, yeah. And then you go to the ones that are not innocent mm-hmm. and like tens of thousands of saves. Who is saving? And it's just a video of like a three-year-old eating a corn dog, yes. right? And it's yes. like, why are you saving that video? Prov- provocative. Yeah. That shouldn't be provocative, right. but we live in a world of sin and, and disgust. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, tens of thousands mm-hmm. of who is saving that? Mm-hmm. Like think in your head, who the mm-hmm. heck is saving that? And exactly. what are they doing and what's their with intention? that image? Yeah. Have they saved it on their phone? Mm-hmm. And then the other thing I saw was um, it was like a reporter at a meta, um, you know, like Facebook meta 
yeah. I don't know, function. And they brought her up on stage. And she has, um, in the past, released things about Mark Zuckerberg because she's like, I don't know, she's, she's a reporter. So she's reported things on him that maybe weren't that great. And they said... We just want to show off our technology here. Now, they preface it and said, like, all of this is fake. You know, none of this is real. But we just want to sit you down and we want to show you how we could discredit you as a reporter. And they just spoke into this little computer <clears throat> and they said discredit or whatever. They gave some open-ended prompt to this AI. And the AI, like, created pornographic movies of her that like deep fake pornographic movies just because it scrolled mm. her what she has posted online of herself um it created like pictures of her dating mark zuckerberg which would have completely mm. ruined her reputation since that's who she reports against right. um videos of her and her voice that it took off of her social media page like saying things that would mm. get her canceled right there was like a lot of really and she was kind of talking about this experience this green screen like there was a green screen behind her that was showing the video Mm. and then she was talking about how like I I knew it was all fake but I was getting upset and I felt the need to defend myself and she's like I'm a 30 something year old woman who Mm. knows that this is fake and the whole room knows that it's fake what's gonna happen when it's your teenager a teenage girl who (sighs) were already Mm -hmm. as teenagers emotional and like Mm -hmm. at least I was (laughs) very dramatic and anything felt like anything Mm -hmm. social that disrupted my social construct like felt like it was the end of the world absolutely what would happen if a deep fake video was put out there of me doing disgusting things i mean i can imagine that that would increase suicide rate right absolutely absolutely yeah it's terrible and yeah and i think that we also just need to get a little bit more real like what you're saying about the world that we live in and the things that are available and i don't i think that when people chalk up decisions like this to like stop living in fear yeah I have a really big issue with that because I almost feel like it's kind of this um dismantling of accountability and it's really easy to just look at what someone else is doing and be like oh they're just living in fear because like you don't want to actually look at the facts and maybe Mm reevaluate your own decisions and it's just easier to brush somebody else off like that I can tell you like I don't feel like I'm making these decisions in fear. I feel like Mm. I'm making them in love and protection. And I feel like it's my job as Sunny and Ledger's mom to do as much as I can on the front end of their lives to set them up for success in the ways that I know how. Yeah. But um, I was like, I was talking about the parenting influencer. Oh yeah. yeah, Who (laughs) it's not funny. Um, is getting like stalked and yes. pictures sent to her oh, from yes. the inside or outside oh, yes. of her home. Yes. Um, and that's not even public information, threats. but yes, no, like someone found out where she lived yeah. based off of context clues. Yeah. So. You could be posting a picture of your kid biking in the neighborhood and yeah. someone can, there is this, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen it, but there's this person on TikTok, and maybe there's a bunch of them um, who will be like, you know, drop your handle and I will find where you live. It's kind of like this game, Mm -hmm. right? It's not like supposed to be serious, but they make it a point to be like, I don't care who you are or what you post or don't post online. Like I can find out where you live. So they take these videos of them going through the whole process of somebody being like, there's nothing on my page that will indicate where I live. And sure enough, every time they find some kind of loophole to be like, well, it looked like this tagged photo, you were here. And then I looked up this street address and it looks like you were here, but that was your friend's house. And then I looked up there and then their tagged photos. And there's this whole like line of events. And then you took this one picture outside of this one place in this tree. And I found on Google images, that same tree. And then I took, went down the street and found your car. And there are people out there who can and will do those things. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like, is that scary? Yeah. But like, we also have a choice that we can make. Um, and so personally what I started doing is I actually don't share any live stories at all. Um, my, all of the stories that I ever post, unless I'm literally reposting my own poem are private. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to know what I did that day. You're not going to know where I was, who I was with, what I was doing. Um, and as the Lord continues to work on my heart, like I'm so open handed and surrendered about social media if he tomorrow was like delete everything I'd be like okay I'll do that I I don't I'm not attached to it in that way like my kids above all else right and like following his voice above all else so um I'm just trying to be obedient with 
with whatever convictions he's giving me yeah. and like trusting that he always has our best interest in mind. Yeah. I'll be vulnerable and I'll be honest right mm-hmm. now because when we had this conversation over a year ago, I was like, I have at that point, like I had a thousand followers. Do I know a thousand people? (laughs) Absolutely not. I know like maybe 50 people. So, (laughs) you know, like closely, intimately, you know what I mean? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. So, but I'm like, it's not, I'm not gonna, I decided like from the get go, from the time I became a mom, my thing was I wasn't going to post my kids other than in their best light. I always had like their, their future self in my mind like is when Noah is 25 years old is he gonna look back on this post and say mom why did you post that that's so embarrassing and I was never ever gonna show any body parts of my children whatsoever fully clothed all the time no excuses there that has like always been my thing and then when I was like contemplating this over the last you know since I've since I've had Lily it's like it was almost like an ego thing. Like so many mm. people love looking at my kids. Mm-hmm. So many people compliment me on how cute they I are. Know, yeah. So many people like I've connected with so many people on Instagram because mm-hmm. I post things mm-hmm. of my children. And then Brady's got this whole office and, and mm-hmm. those people feel connected to our practice because yeah. they see my children. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I had this whole like, I don't know. I had to kind of get over that, but it did feel hard. Yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. I'm like looking back on because that. Because there, there are life, there are life's work and they're yeah. under a little umbrella you know where they used to be on a mountaintop in the realm of like because I I felt like the conversations in my dms have significantly declined Mm -hmm. because there's not a face to my writings there's Mm -hmm. like who is this girl even talking about right it's just an anomaly which is fine that's what I wanted it to become but um there used to be so much like your heart jumps when somebody's like oh your your daughter's so joyful she's so confident she's so beautiful like your son is so cute whatever it is your heart leaps because that's your life's dedication and your life's work so it's almost like you're sewing and I've had to take this up with the Lord so many times because my work is not on display anymore. Yeah. And like what I'm doing every day in my home. You're not getting praised from no. outside sources. No. That is hard. That's I'm what not, I felt. And yeah. And we've, and like, I crave that. And I know you do too. Yeah. Like we're words of affirmation people. Like yeah. you really do appreciate when people <laughs> yeah. can be like, whoa, you're doing a great yeah. job. How is somebody going to know that I just made fr- made a whole meal for my friend yeah. who just lost a baby when, oh, you know, like they, I didn't post it. Or they're, how are they going to know that I just redecorated my my daughter's nursery when I didn't post it? How yeah. are they going to know that I just did all this yard work and I just, you know, made these cookies and I, whatever it is, yeah. whatever it is, our life's work, right? And yeah. we want that to be recognized. And I think that, that, I don't think that's bad, but I just think that like, it's hard to do it yeah. with nobody watching. Well, and it's interesting because like, that's how all of humanity has always done everything mm-hmm. and how like, we are kind of the first generation that. I think has this problem Mm -hmm. of like, but it's not getting recognized I know because it didn't. And, and, and then I also have this thought while you were just talking, not only while you were just talking, but in my, in my prayers through this, cause I'm like, God, just soften my heart, like make this easier for me because it Mm -hmm. feels like really dumb, but it feels Mm -hmm. like kind of this hard thing. Mm -hmm. And I got this like overwhelming impression of, I don't, maybe you, I need to have a lesson on whose approval I'm seeking mm. because I only need his approval. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I need him to mm-hmm. care about what I'm doing. And when I'm, st- and, and I've noticed over the last few weeks when I'm more focused as I'm working on what he thinks of what I'm doing mm-hmm. versus what people are going to think when I post it on social mm-hmm. media, it's become a little bit more wholesome. Totally. Yeah. A little oh, less abs- pressure. Absolutely. Things don't have to be yes. perfect. I could not agree more. Like, honestly, I feel like my biggest prayer every single day is like, Lord, I want this to be enough if I'm only doing it for you. Like, yeah. I want your praise, your approval, all those things. Like, the amount of times I've just, and now I just say it to myself. I know what it means. I'm like, let this be enough. Let this be enough. Let this be enough. Yeah. What if a, nobody nobody ever hears about what I did today that I thought was really kind for, like, X, yeah. Y, and Z? What if nobody ever hears about, you know, the way that I just resolved that conflict with Sunny? Yeah. What if nobody ever hears about all these, like, things I'm trying to do to, like, help Ledger meet his milestone? Like, yeah. they won't. No. And, and, like, I just think there's something really precious about – I had a friend recently kind of say, like, um, something about, like, it just – I was, I was opening up about postpartum with Ledger and how I feel like with your second baby, people aren't as like, Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Are you okay? Right. You got you, this. You were like, you, yeah. of course. <laughs> um, but like, it's just a little bit more like, Oh, they're probably fine because it's their second kid. Right. Yeah. And during that transition period, I found myself feeling like a little bit disappointed by like a couple close people in my life where mm-hmm. I'm like, 
you haven't checked in on me one time. Like, yeah. you don't know if I'm okay. That's fine with you. You know, whatever. Just processing that a little bit. Well, I decided to like bring it up to one of my friends. We were talking about it. And um, she was like, it's just hard. Cause like, it seemed like you were doing so well. And I'm like, but how do you, how? Because she saw you on social because, media. Because of what I was posting on my Instagram, right? Yeah. And this is no shade to her because, no, I, because I think I do the, the same works. thing. I think yeah. I do the same thing with other people. I'm like, you were going through a hard time. What? You guys were just at the park with all your yeah. fun. Like you were just uh, getting cupcakes, you know, yeah. like you just assume you know the full story. Yeah. And, um, and I think like I had kind of, my response was like, I decided I was going to stop sharing the hard things the private things, yeah. the struggles, yeah. the all of that on social media because A, I'm, I'm just a more of a private person by nature. Mm. Like if you're my close person, you know everything. And if you're not, you know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also I didn't really, it didn't sit right in my spirit to be exposing my vulnerability uh, to these 30,000 people. So three three stadiums of red rocks that puts it so much into perspective. Yeah. Like here's on my megaphone, here's everything <laughs> I'm going through. Here's everything going on in my life, right? Yeah, wow. For crickets to be resounding. Yeah. That is not good for my spirit. I don't think that's good for anybody's spirit. But I think the biggest thing is like, what if I was taking those things to the Lord first and foremost? And what if I use that as an opportunity to let the people close to me in Mm -hmm. when it's hard? It's hard for me to be vulnerable. As much as like I value that, it is so hard for me to tell a friend like that I am not doing well and tell them why, right? But like how much more precious are your actual real life relationships because you can do that and how much more special do they feel because they're not hearing something through a screen. Mm -hmm. They're hearing it through you and your own voice and your own relationship. Mm -hmm. So I almost felt like I was doing my relationships in honor by taking the hard things offline because let's talk about them in person if you're my person, you know? Yeah. I've never been a hard things online. Well, I guess that's not true because I did. We started, I started sharing on my personal page about birth trauma, but it was like through a lens of of like, let me help you type mm-hmm. thing. Like I'm already on the other side of it. Let me help you. But I just think that social media is not a place for dirty laundry Yeah, ever. Like the trend going on right now, I sent this to Jesse and all <laughs> of you might hate me for this, but the trend that's like, what is it? What does it start with? Like um, my I, Instagram's a highlight reel. Here's these things yeah, I'm struggling yeah. with. And then here's these people that I really like respect. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to know their dirty laundry, mm-hmm. but now I have to know their dirty laundry because <laughs> right. I'm, it's on my page. And right. I literally have scrolled past every single mm-hmm. one of those. I'm like, I don't want to know. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Maybe well, that makes not, me less human. I don't know. I Well, here's the thing is like, I think that there's an aspect of it that feels good when you do listen. Like if I'm honest, if I'm like having a really hard day and I'm online and then I see, I hear that someone else is having a really hard day, I get the... Um, the bid for connection, I guess yeah. I get the the goal of connection with another human without ever having to share what's going on, yeah. you know? And but so I it's almost like, like if there, if you're going through something, like when we went through miscarriages, mm-hmm. you need a community around mm-hmm. you. So like going and seeking the people that are specifically talking about that. And then I'm not surprised when yeah. they're talking about it, right. but it's like these big like accounts that I follow for one reason, right? Because I'm learning about co-sleeping or I'm learning about yeah. whatever, but then all of a sudden now I know, too much yeah too much Mm -hmm. and then also it's like when i i have a very curated feed Mm -hmm. i don't follow people that i I protect my spirit a lot yeah Um, right and so like when i'm sitting there and lily's sleeping i like to let her just sleep on my boob for a good 10 minutes before i set her down because then she's out Mm -hmm. so during that time like she's not looking at me i'm like okay i'm gonna pick up my phone i'm Mm -hmm. gonna scroll my phone and usually it's all very nice motherly, like, yeah. or it's like books or, you know what I mean? It's something very curated. But then mm-hmm. I, bam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Get out of here. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. I don't like it. But all of that to say, like, yeah, I just don't think that social media is a place for dirty laundry. And it's definitely not a place for your kids' dirty laundry. Right. Because you know what else Jesse and I watched? And I texted her after I watched it. And I had a hard time watching mm-hmm. it was quite on set yeah. on hbo max or max or whatever it is now mm-hmm. it's changed his name so many times um <clears throat> and i had this thought because if you don't know quite on set is a um a, sh- a limited series about the mega stars of the early 2000s and late 90s on nickelodeon so it's like drake bell the amanda show like i mean and and um i don't know spears yes zoe 101 all of these big shows uh Mm iCarly and victorious victorious yeah there's a bunch um shows that we grew up on and now uh, here's this show talking about how they were all being harassed some of them actually 
sexually not I wouldn't I don't even want to say sexually abused I'll just say raped, raped. sodomized mm-hmm. and raped by people on Producers. set like mm-hmm. and here's this video of like how and all of these people even if they didn't have an experience to the extreme of Drake Bell who just floored me when he came on screen I know freaking floored me because mm-hmm. Drake and Josh was like my favorite show me too my favorite. my favorite yeah um they all felt kind of like used and it made me think okay what documentary am I going to be watching 10, 15 years from now about the mom fluencer kids, the YouTube kids? A thousand percent. The people who are making money mm-hmm. off of children right now. And then also, it also got me thinking like there were no laws to protect these children on this set. Like mm-hmm. pedophiles could just have mm-hmm. a job there. And mm-hmm. then that led to kids being raped and, and, are there laws now mm-hmm. with social media? Because there's not. No, they're being put. And this is what we were talking about, like in our social media episode is like, they're calling it sharenting. Um, and there are legislation, there are laws being put into practice right now because there are questions of consent. Yeah. There's questions of exploitation. There's questions of um, like monetary, like what is what monetary settlements? Like what does that look like if yeah. your kid was your income? your source of income, what does that entitle them to when they are 18 years old? And even if beyond all of the legislation, what is your kid going to feel someday knowing that they have an audience? I'm sorry, the LeBrant family and each of their kids has an audience of about 2 million. If not the LeBrant's I'll show you them. I don't follow. I literally don't follow. I don't follow them either, but it's just, it's like a very known family of like, they're a Christian family, so people like look up to them. Yeah. Well, each of their kids has their own Facebook profile or Instagram profile, and they each have like two million followers on their Instagrams. Every single thing about each of those kids is closely followed and monitored and understood and remembered by two million, if not more, people. Yeah. Tell me how one of those kids turns eighteen, goes into the world, and has any semblance of a normal life. Yeah. And they didn't ask for that. Well, and then also with that whole deep fake stuff, what is your mm-hmm. kid gonna feel if you you're not you're a mom influencer and you're sharing just every aspect of their life and then they turn 18 and bam now there's these deep fake videos mm-hmm. of them doing who knows what yeah. and what are the repercussions of that mm-hmm. not only like to them but what are going to be the repercussions on that to you yeah mm-hmm. because i mean and hopefully the law does something and they will that. they will because we're the first um we have to remember we're the first generation of social media so these yeah. things were we are the guinea pigs mm-hmm. our kids are um the lab rats for lack of better words. So we're doing this for the first time. Legislation is, is on top of it. And I know that they're coming out with things probably within the next year, but please also remember like, you don't have to be an influencer, you know, no. like it, ha- and that's like, where I struggled with. I'm it like, could I'm be not anything. An influencer. And that's the, yeah. And totally. And I even, I even struggle with that. I'm like, okay, 30,000 people have millions. Like, come yeah. on, how many people are actually blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think what's crazy is like, Oh, and I didn't even tell you this. I took my kids off of social media. I don't even post my dogs anymore. I don't even post my husband. Like my face is usually the only one you can see on my page because I feel like I'm the only person that should be on my page as far as like consent goes. And like, sure, I'm sure Chase would be fine if I posted his face, but it's like, I just want to be only responsible for me, if that makes sense. Like I don't feel right about posting other people. Anyways, (laughs) I was in Florida last month at a farmer's market with sunglasses on okay by myself with none of my kids this girl comes running up to me and she was like oh my gosh are you jesse in front of my mom my sisters everybody right and i'm like yeah and she's so sweet but she was like oh my gosh i've always wanted to meet you like i'm so excited to meet you and we talked for like a few minutes and i just thought about like i'm across the country at a farmer's market with my sunglasses on with no makeup on like (laughs) the, <laughs> I just I just think we need to be a little bit more realistic about like it just takes a few interactions online mm-hmm. for you to become recognizable in public. You got to learn and, and be OK and understand what that means for yourself and for the people that you're mm-hmm. sharing on your page as well. Um, and no, is that is that inherently dangerous? No, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not. But like it can be. Um, well, and with AI, and there's just always out, a like, little bit of. Yeah, there's that now this this unknown 
evil. And I, that's the only way I can describe that as evil. Mm-hmm. Well, w- okay. So what you were thinking about with the teenage years, I had a thought about like, what if we're, what if you and I are like 16? We're best friends. We're at a sleepover. Maybe we start discussing boys and we're mm. like, oh, we end up realizing we like the same boy. Okay. Now, if say, say that turns into a big thing because that's what's a big thing yeah. when you're 16. You can, one of us could go and make a video of this boy telling us, quote unquote, I really like you. I don't like Amanda, Mm -hmm. you know, but don't tell her, whatever, something nasty, right? Yeah. I could literally take that video, send it to you and be like, see, he likes me. He doesn't like you. He never said that. And then it could be like a he said, she said situation. And I was thinking about this the other day because I was like thinking about how nasty girls and every mostly girls yeah can be yeah. at those at those ages and then if you can literally put a face tell that face in a realistic video to say whatever you want mm-hmm. it just turns into a he said she said situation like how do i know you didn't actually say that yeah. and like that's terrifying i know that's, and and so- someone's gonna say oh but they're making it like they're putting things in the ai to protect people from that like no no it's no they are trying but people are still getting around it i forget the example the in that video what was the example i don't remember there was some example where she's like okay but if i say this specific word it says ai can't do that but then if i do this loophole this this go around and i don't say it so directly it just spills it all out for me you know what i mean so it's like Yes, you can say, oh, they're going to put protections in place on AI, so AI can't do that. Bull crap. It's, I, yeah. Uh, and That's honestly, naive. I just think that we need to lose our faith in technology in the world of that. I, I do think that there is like inherently demonic, systematic yeah. things in place for technology. Oh, well, listen, Instagram is literally, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, have people whose entire job is is to get you addicted Mm -hmm. to their app. That's their whole job. That most of their team, that's what they do because the more you're on your phone and on your app, it's collecting data of how long you're on there, the more they get paid Mm -hmm. by advertisement companies. You're just putting money Mm -hmm. into the CEO's pocket Mm -hmm. by staying on your phone. So like that is inherently evil. Mm -hmm. I think we can use social media for good. 100%. 100%. I think like we post our reels on there mm-hmm. hoping that we reach moms that yeah. need to hear like a, a message from someone mm-hmm. like us. Great. But inherently it is evil. It mm-hmm. is literally sitting there trying to suck your soul yeah. out of your body right. and get your brain hardwired to need to pick up your phone every five I seconds. Yeah. So like trusting anything to have to do with technology, mm-hmm. social media, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, whoever it mm-hmm. is, not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Not a good idea. And then yeah. I just think like, if you have something, and I said, that, I think I said this in one of our episodes already, but if like, if whatever you're picking up more than you're picking up scriptures, whoever you're talking to outside of like real people that isn't talking to God or like your loved mm-hmm. ones, like that's your idol. Mm-hmm. That's what you're worshiping. I know. And that just sticks a knife right into my gut because how that, I know uh, that's all of us. Mm-hmm. It's just so sad because I feel like Satan's so present in this world I right know. now. Mm -hmm. And he has so many awesome tools Mm -hmm. that like a little bit of truth Mm -hmm. gets him in the door. Do you know what I mean? The little bit of good you get on social media Mm -hmm. gets him in the door. Yeah. Yeah. I I a thousand percent agree. And I, I, I found it to be, I think what was hard for me when I did give this up was that it was my creative outlet. Like you and I are both very creative people. Like we need outlets to pour that Mm -hmm. out too. Right. Like, Agree. like we both love to write we both love to create in our home we both love to bake we both like mm. those are things that we can like use our hands and make something beautiful and I think that like capturing pictures of Sunny was like my favorite thing yeah. to do of course I it is. You love mean take, little person. <laughs> yeah I love taking her photo and then like writing a caption in my heart behind my page two years ago before I took her her face off of it was I cannot wait for Sunny to someday she's going to be in her dorm Mm -hmm. and she's going to be having some kind of identity crisis. Like we all are at some point in high school or college where we're like, who am I? What do I want out of life? Or maybe like you get so consumed with college life that you like forget who you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just pray that a, she opens her Bible. Right. Obviously I hope she opens her Bible and I hope she hears what the Lord has to say about her. B I hope she gets on my Instagram and she scrolls as far as she wants to. And she reads about who I always saw like her to be Mm -hmm. um and i hope she like remembers who she is i i want to be there to remind her every time that she might forget and that was my heart behind it for so long 
that losing that was big. Like that was a really big loss and it was sad. And I think what I did is I started journaling for her in my phone. Like, Mm and she has a note in my phone. Ledger has a note in my phone. Every time I have a good thought about them, I write it down. Mm -hmm. Every time they do something that I'm like, oh, I never want to forget this. I write it down. And Sunny's note is so long, so long. Um, I bought baby books and I bought photo journals. So Mm -hmm. every six months I go to Walgreens and I print out all the photos I have of both the kids. They go, they usually I fill up a whole book every year. Like that's kind of what's been on track. They're those like thick ones from Hobby Lobby, you know? Um, And I've just started turning the creative energy like inward and it's like, if no one ever sees this, but them, that's who I was doing it for yeah, all along. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 st- I still love to write and I can write without sharing like personal information about my kids. Um, but like trying to ask yourself like this doesn't, this might feel like a loss, but it doesn't have to be a loss. Like where are my intentions? Where's my heart? And how can I move forward? And I, I do feel like we're ending. I feel like the period of time where kids are going to be online, I think it's ending. Like, I, I think it's so. become, I think it's going to become taboo to share your kid online. Mm. Um, and I don't say that out of judgment. I just see these trends. Well, on public profiles. Of, yes. There's tons of people out there that still use Instagram and Facebook privately. Mm-hmm. Great. Not who we're talking about. I just see the trends of like even famous people. Yeah. Taking their kids off of the internet. And I think it's really starting because those people have so much more influence. I think that's starting to like get people's wheels turning. It's like, why do these people in Hollywood think that they should take their kids out of the spotlight? Like why? And I think it's just, it's creating this like momentum of people asking why. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, so I use social media, um, outside of a creative outlet. I use it as a tool because I live out of state from my family Mm -hmm. so I had it took me like a really long time to do this but I because I did have a public Facebook profile I no longer have a public Facebook profile and I went through every person on my Facebook and deleted everybody I I have not met Mm -hmm. and I don't know like I know Julie from wherever is not a pedophile is not taking yeah like photos. do you know what i mean it's like it's actually so easy to be like do yeah. i know you yeah. yes or no and and i was actually surprised at how easy it was to be like okay remove friend remove friend totally I don't and then it started feeling icky why do you want to see my profile why well, I'm, I'm a mom page Get, mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it became icky and i started deleting all of those so on in, on facebook um it's now private it's shut down and um so i feel comfortable sharing my normal stuff with my family that way Instagram, I did the same thing uh, of having a close friends list. And I'm still like, I still really like to share things. So I still get on there and I'll share like my bread or mm-hmm. maybe if I can get a picture or a video of what we're doing and the kids are not facing me. I'm, I'm still messing mm-hmm. with that. And I'm not at my final product yet. I'm yeah, not totally. I'm not at where I, I think I'll be in a year. But for right now, this is what I'm and doing. And I don't think we ever are. Like, I no, think that's kind evolving. of like, yeah, like I think that's kind of the, and that's totally like, and Amanda said this earlier and I want to reemphasize it like, our convictions are individual. Yeah. I was even just like reading scripture on the way over here about like your convictions and how, you know, there's things in the Bible that are like laid out so black and white. And then there's gray areas. And like, that's where the Holy Spirit speaks to us and yes. says like, this is what is okay for you. And this yes. is what's not. And you are responsible and the only one responsible for following those. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, you can't assume that because you're convicted about something, something that someone else is because yeah. they might not be facing any kind of danger yeah. in that regard. I never felt it yeah. literally until like the last couple of weeks. And right. it was like a kick in my gut of yeah. the spirit telling me, no, mm-hmm. somebody's here. Mm-hmm. You need to, yeah. you need to hunker down. Mm-hmm. You need to fix this. Yeah. And then, and the thing is, is like when it's a prompting from the Holy Spirit, you won't hesitate. No. So like if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, should I? Is that for me? Yeah. It's like if it's actually from him, you're not going to hesitate. You're going to you're going to feel the mm-hmm. weight of that and you're going to. And that doesn't mean that you can't be influenced by someone else's convictions, because I know like even when you were processing that with me a couple weeks ago, you know, and you said that I was like, oh, gosh, like that just hit me in a way that made me want to actually go back and delete mm-hmm. everything of Sunny on my page, which like I had never done previously. And yeah. so, um, I don't know, like you can learn and you can be influenced by other people's convictions, yeah. but like you, at the end of the day, like you can't force those on other people and you have to kind of sit no. and be like, what is this saying for me and my family? You know, and that goes with anything, mm-hmm. literally anything. I think that the beauty of the gray area, because there are black and white things mm-hmm. in Christianity, 
but there is so much gray area. Probably more, right? Yeah. Like there is more gray area than yeah. there is black and white. The black and white is very small. Yeah, right. But the gray area is where the beauty is because again, that is where you have community. That's our communication mm-hmm. with the Holy Spirit. That's where you have communication mm-hmm. with your Father in heaven, who is a living God mm-hmm. that you can pray to. It takes practice. It takes discipline to like notice the promptings and to mm-hmm. hear what He's trying to tell totally. you. Yeah. I think when you're first starting out, that can be overwhelming. But mm-hmm. like as you grow, it grows grows Mm -hmm. and I don't know and it can even just like manifest as like a little disturbance at first like yeah you like have been doing something for so long you haven't thought twice about it and then all of a sudden you feel this like resistance Mm -hmm. I would I would view as like a resistance or um kind of like a loss of um purpose or like it kind of for me sometimes just starts off as like resistance and then the more I press into it I get more of that direction Mm -hmm. and peace um, and then when you obey whatever is like being asked of you, you feel this like flooding yes. of like protection and grace and like yes. you feel like good follows good. it. Yeah. Good follows it. Not only good as in like the way you're feeling. Right. But like blessings Peace. come into your yes. life as well. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you are so blessed when you're obedient. Mm-hmm. So, so like, it's just like, hey, thanks. Mm-hmm. That's like positive reinforcement. Mm-hmm. Totally. It's great. it's great. Um, yeah, it's been a weird few weeks because <laughs> all Dude, this is such a weird few weeks. weeks i know <laughs> such oh, a weird few weeks oh my gosh and i created that close friends list and then a couple and i've added some people i've I, in this community that i've built connections with that i know that are like patients and i've actually seen them in real life mm-hmm. or brady has and but like i was wondering if you decided to take them off because there's a while where i didn't have the close friends list because yeah, it takes time I know. to go through two thousand people i can't imagine mm-hmm. well you haven't done it with all of your followers mm-hmm. you just knew who you wanted but to go yeah. through two thousand people and say who's a patient that brady really values who's a friend that brady really values who's mm-hmm. somebody i really value you know what i mean and i just wasn't posting them at all mm-hmm. and i do sometimes grieve like i know there are people who follow me on instagram who have pure hearts and and our mothers and our like older mothers like grandmas who like I used to have all the conversations in the world with um and I because I don't know them personally couldn't think of their names off the top of my head to add them to my close friends list but like I do grieve those conversations and those things but um it's it's never gonna be like an easy decision it's always gonna have like you know but it's a weird world we live in. It's just weird. And like, I just feel like because we're the first ones doing it, I would much rather err on the side of caution than yeah. potentially put my relationship with Sunny on or Ledger. Like I, I just have this feeling more so with Sunny. Like I, and I don't know if it's like a girl boy thing or personality thing. Like I just feel like Ledger, <laughs> I just Ledger's feel like a fight. <laughs> I do. I just feel like he's going to be this like really strong man. Like I don't yeah. think he's going to need the protection of his mother yeah. past like age 10. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sunny is the most sensitive, yeah. sweet, spongy soul I've ever met in my life. And we were just talking about this, like the smallest little comment will mm-hmm. influence her. And she, she forgets nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that girl forgets nothing. And so it feels very weighty and yeah. it felt very timely. And it felt like I would never forgive myself if I looked back and I can genuinely say I've never made a dime on Sunny. Like I genuinely can say that, but I would never be able to look back on my life and be like, you know, she, she grows up and she has some kind of harbored, whether it is voiced or not voiced resentment towards me because she was the face of my of my Instagram feed for 20 yeah. plus years of her life and then um all these people that she doesn't know know everything about her and and I just like why would that be worth it long term well, there's nothing also, that's worth that okay listen to this my whole life in my family I have been kind of put on a pedestal with my dad's entire side of the family mm-hmm. with my grandparents I was the first one to graduate high school in Mm -hmm. my whole family, right? And then I went on to college and then I went on to get Mm -hmm. a doctor's degree. So like I've always been, it's always been very focused on my looks Mm -hmm. and my books. That's what Mm -hmm. I always say in my Mm -hmm. head. Like um, to the point where when I became a mother, it was like an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay home. What? I'm not going to put makeup on today. I'm not going to get validation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was really hard. How much harder would mm-hmm. that be if I had a whole life 
documented Mm -hmm. on social media where my my mom's or my parents and my dad's side of the family the things they were saying to me they were Mm -hmm. saying to the whole world Mm -hmm. how much harder of a decision would that have been Mm -hmm. to follow my true calling what i was feeling was Mm -hmm. like this is what god created me to do Mm -hmm. and if you ever have the chance to feel that way like that is a blessing but then to how hard of a time i had just because like oh what is my grandparents gonna think mm-hmm. they're dead mm-hmm. <laughs> what are they thinking you know yeah. up there while they're watching me right um which was so dumb hindsight yeah. but like how much harder would that have been if there oh, was a totally. whole life logged of my personality yeah. through someone else's eyes yeah because and like what do you feel like you need to live up to yeah. and and you know oh gosh yeah and Sunny and lily might grow up and they might not see themselves the way we see them mm-hmm. and actually they won't for a while, they might mm-hmm. act. If this is who they truly are, right? If this is mm-hmm. who true Sunny is to her core, eventually mm-hmm. she's going to see that. But mm-hmm. she's going to go through a phase mm-hmm. as a teenager where she's going to rebel mm-hmm. and she's going to say, "I'm not that person. Mm-hmm. I'm my own person." Mm-hmm. And we have to. That is human nature. Yeah. We mm-hmm. have to like fight and for our own personalities in our mm-hmm. own way. So, like, how much more difficult is it going to be on these mm-hmm. teenagers when their whole life is on Instagram and their yeah. friends can like get on their mom's Instagram? Yeah. And like go back and look at them when they're a toddler or like bullies, school bullies. Mm-hmm. Did you have a school bully? Mm-hmm. I had a school bully. I had mm-hmm. a lot of school bullies. Yep. And Her what if they could Morgan Pritchett <laughs> and then Lexi Contoys. <gasps> uh, I've got a few names. I'm not going to name them because I'm so non One of them is not alive anymore, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, but but how much worse would your school bullying have been if they could take prized precious photos of you as a mm-hmm. child and blast them on the internet and Absolutely. say, look at this, you know, whatever X, Y, Z. And those are things that you held precious to you because your mm-hmm. mom wrote this beautiful post mm-hmm. and it's like this endearing, like I'm a child. It's this mm-hmm. capturing who I was mm-hmm. and now it's being used as a weapon. I know. And oh. like, what is that going to do to the suicide rates in our teenagers mm-hmm. and in our young children? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. No, it's a lot. And it's, it's like, it's important, I think, is like mm-hmm. what, you know, regardless of what you end up doing, like, I hope that this just makes you start thinking about more of like than just what yeah. we want and we're right now. Yeah. Especially if like is you're a forever. public page. And I feel like that was something that like was kind of swirling around when I was like maybe in high school. I think Instagram came out when I was like in like, I don't know, eighth grade. I got on it when school? I was in college. I'm a little older than you. I'm 92. So I... Facebook was the thing. I think I was like a junior in high school when Instagram came out. Yeah. Facebook, I don't remember. That had been a lot around for a while. Oh, I remember Facebook. I was MySpace. 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 (laughs) Can we talk about how damaging it was to like rank your (laughs) friends? Oh and gosh. how you could like get in a fight with someone and straight up delete them from your friend oh list oh my gosh the i my best friend i love her i know she's not listening to this I, my childhood best friend who was such a mean girl <laughs> now i was her friend so like she was a bulldog if uh-huh. someone was mean to me but she was such a mean girl and i just remember being in her house and i'm just standing because i've always been non-confrontational and kind of quiet mm-hmm. and just standing in the background while she's like fighting with people on aim mm. and like removing yeah. people from her top eight and uh-huh. just, oh my gosh but now oh, yeah. it's so much worse now mm-hmm. it's so much worse. and cyberbullying is just like okay it's just <sighs> like a thing that we what? have people cyberbullying us on this. I know. Like you can hop on with the best of intentions. We yeah. have no other intention other than to just talk about being a I mom, know. right? Husbands and like hate people me. can distort <laughs> that so much. I know. Husbands, Husbands it's just me. so <laughs> crazy. Like it doesn't matter who you are. And um yeah, and like I know that Jesus says like in this life that we're gonna have hard times and like I just feel like we're not getting stoned and we're not getting, you know hung no, what, and we're not getting beheaded says, like, but um if they hate you don't worry they hated me first yeah they hated that him first like, such a comfort to mm-hmm. me with this page specifically because yeah. we're not posting our kids i have no guilt about what yeah. we're sharing i literally when i when i cut reels from our our podcast i'm trying to say like yes what's going to get buzz mm-hmm. but also like what's going to reach the people that mm-hmm. we need to pull in mm-hmm. and then uh, every week and that's what o- a- that's what always <laughs> that, like <laughs> and that's what always keeps me going and that's why i told you that when our first reel went viral it's just like I like I'm not a people pleaser but I don't like when people have a distorted perception of me I don't like when people don't like me whatever that's like human nature um but I I tell myself that all the time I'm like Jesus was perfect and he came here and he was like passionately killed on a cross and so like why do I think I'm just gonna like get through this life unscathed but like I just feel like yeah I don't know I I, this is just something I'm passionate about because it's like obviously I just want to like do this well like I want to raise Sunny and I always, I just keep saying Sunny. I have two kids. Like I want, 
it's just like so irrelevant when you're holding your like like four month old baby in your arms you're like what do you have to worry about but like you know i'm like actively watching her play with the kids in the cul-de-sac and have to like learn how to hold her own and like what comes out of her mouth if i'm not there and like what does she respond to if like she thinks i'm not listening and um it's hard it's hard to like progressively let go of your kid as like the older that they get but like what are you doing now to just to try to build that foundation as firm as possible? Yeah. And I just feel this really increased need of protection yeah. over her. Plus you like run into people you don't see every day and like, they don't know anything about your kid. They can actually yes, ask yeah. questions. Yeah. You know, they're not like, Oh, hi Sunny. I saw that you did this for your birthday. And I saw that you just did this last week and yeah. you were at the zoo yesterday and you were at the, you know, you were at Trader yeah. Joe's earlier. You're like, no, nope, but it's like, what have you been up to? Yeah. I actually don't know, yeah. <laughs> you know? And that there's something about that that's kind of exciting too. Also, like our entire lives weren't documented as children and we're fine. <laughs> so <laughs> Okay. Um, let's pivot a little bit because we were just talking and, and we're coming up at the end of the episode, but we just got off of Easter, right? Yep. <laughs> and I took Noah to the library a few days before Easter with the intentions of getting some Easter books. We have Easter books. New Easter books, whatever. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And the, the library has this big section. That's their seasonal section. If it's Valentine's Day, there's covered in Valentine's Day books. Whatever the holidays, it's covered in books about the holiday. So here we are, like a week before Easter, and they have a whole section of women's history. They have a whole section for Ramadan. They have a whole section on spring. There was not a single, a single book about Jesus Christ in that library. And I asked, I was like, hey, are all the, the Easter books checked out? She's like, oh, that's all of them. I was like, but... Jesus like not the bunny <laughs> yeah I'm 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 looking for like mm-hmm. books about Jesus she's like yeah we, aren't, we don't have any of those and I have been ruminating on this because this is a place I take my child mm-hmm. I take him there weekly mm-hmm. and now I'm questioning myself mm-hmm. because they don't have any books about Jesus same thing with Target when I went there for like stuff I was I was floored I did find one book about Jesus and then at Hobby Lobby I did find oh, one yeah, as well yeah. which is like great because Hobby Lobby is yeah, oh they have all the crafts like we got like a, a um Easter scene of like the tomb and yeah, Jesus yeah. and Mary favorite. yeah all of those <laughs> things that we could like paint like a mm-hmm. ceramic thing to paint but yeah it's that's the world we're living in like we are very much going to continue to be ostracized and yeah. um I feel like you're a rebel now yeah. to talk about Jesus Oh yeah, absolutely. You and are not the the mainstream anymore. Mm-hmm. Have you f- seen those people that go around and just ask random people like, "Can you tell me did a Bible verse?" S- did you send me that? I might somebody have, I don't know. sent me a reel, and it was, and I am not even joking because this is the first time. This might have been has Kate. I feel like Kate head. is like the ultimate reel. I know sender. she sent me so much, but someone sent me a reel, and it was walking up to people on the street and asking if they believe that. Uh, in Jesus Christ. Oh, that made me cry. It made me cry too. That was like I, hundreds like, of people yes. that were just like, no. Every time someone said no, it was like a yeah. kick in mm-hmm. my gut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> so anyways, we're mm-hmm. reading right now in our book club, Mama Bear Apologetics. Now, mm-hmm. I'm a little uncomfortable with the book. I've had a really hard time with it because mm-hmm. I'm so non-confrontational and the whole book <laughs> is confrontation. So literally I'm reading this and I'm like, yeah. The only thing I've had yeah. a hard time with is like her voice on audiobooks. Yeah, but audiobook <laughs> a little hard. Um, no, I, I was literally talking to Brady about this last night. I was like, yeah, I'm just having the hardest time. He's like, why? I'm like, it just makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it truly does. But it gives like some amazing, not amazing, some like heart stopping facts yeah. on Ugh. our kids leaving faith. I know. And not only that, but it like, I don't know. It gives a lot of like kind of a good overview of like kind of the opinions of the world because mm-hmm. i was so naive to all of that i'm just like of course they believe in mm-hmm. jesus christ I like <laughs> i just assume the majority of the world is christian i know not all everybody i know right. that i'm not right. dumb but right. i don't know so this was kind of this has kind of been like a ooh, my maybe i need a little be a little bit more sensitive to outside influence yeah and so when we went to the freaking library mm-hmm. and they didn't have a single book about jesus christ on I easter know. but they had all these other things i know and then it's like how come everybody else gets to celebrate their culture? I but know. for why, why is our culture becoming? Cause being, I'm sorry, being a white Christian in America is like basically the most, I don't know how to like, I don't want to say hated. Cause I know everybody has a reason as to why they feel differently, but like we're, we're viewed as the most privileged. And so therefore like we don't deserve 
anything. We don't deserve any representation. We don't deserve any. And I don't want to speak too far into this because I don't want to sound ignorant. Yeah. But like, I just feel like the most hated kind of person right now is a Christian. Mm -hmm. And then bonus points if you're white and bonus points if you live in America. Like, I don't think you have a single say over anything that goes on right now. And I, and I was talking, I was talking to someone about this the other day. I'm like, I have two siblings who are, um, Asian. Mm Mm-hmm. I've watched them be bullied throughout their entire life. I've watched them struggle over not feeling represented. I've watched them struggle over not fitting in. I've watched them struggle over, you know, just the the bare fact of the like matter that is there's not a significant Asian population in America. Mm-hmm. They both ended up in going to school in Hawaii because that they're surrounded by people who look like them. Mm-hmm. So there's a part of me that's kind of like, I don't know, like I, I feel like I don't, I don't pretend to know what it feels like to not fit in. Yeah. Whether that's culturally, racially, religiously, any of that. Like if I look at my life, that has never really been a factor at play yeah. for what I have to face. Um, but I think, I think what's heartbreaking is it's like, forget race, forget like backgrounds, cultures, upbringings, whatever. Like Christ deserves to be represented. Yeah. Christ deserves to be on, on those bookshelves. Like, forget about me and my desires and my wants. Like he, he deserves that. And I think that that's, what's heartbreaking. And it's just going to get increasingly worse till he comes Mm -hmm. back. And like the Bible tells us that, but it's really sad to watch it happen because like, if you know him, if you really, really know him, your heart will break over the fact that people are denying him. And I feel like the people that are denying him, they don't actually know his heart for his kids. It's just, it's, it was never about the rules and the laws and like everything that we have to do right. And like, I'm literally going to get emotional because I just feel like when we watch those videos, like those reels, it's like, you don't know him Mm -mm. because he, he wants nothing but good for us. Mm -hmm. Like he came to save us. And, and I just like, there's just like this compassion drawn about in me where I'm like all the issues of the world. And you just look at like the cross and like you look at, I just picture his eyes in his heart and like his arms wide opened Mm -hmm. and that's all he's ever wanted is for like his kids to come back to him and this like blatant disrespect of who he is and this blatant denial and this blatant like yeah it's easter but like you're not the reason Mm -hmm. it's like gosh like that's rough that's hard yeah i feel like i've had a big eye-opening about how much evil really is in the world and not that i'm like scared of it because I know where my salvation lies Mm -hmm. and that's fine. Yeah. But kind of looping back to what we've been talking about, there are people out there that don't know him (laughs) and they're doing whatever they want, Mm -hmm. you know, with whatever you're putting out there. And that's a scary thought. And like the stats in that book about like being raised in like Bible school Mm -hmm. or like church. um, I need to look back on that, but it was like one of the first chapters and it was talking about kids that are like raised in Sunday school Mm -hmm. And how much less likely they are to know the Lord long term mm-hmm. than kids who weren't. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we doing wrong? Yeah. And like, if that doesn't show you like that, it has nothing to do with us and everything to do with the Lord yeah. chasing them down and calling them higher in their own lives. Like, oh, parenting is like such a surrender. It is. Ooh, I feel like it's just getting harder and harder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, okay. Well. Sorry about our little hiatus. We are always going to do this if we physically can. Yeah. And sometimes we just physically, <laughs> physically can't. <cannot. laughs> and I'm sure you guys are all like, I feel like everyone's in the thick of sixth season. and um, We're almost done. We have to be. Like April, come on. <laughs> For sure by May, right? Yeah. yeah. I feel like you once know. we hit Mother's Day. Whew, smooth sailing. I know, yeah. It's coming. Summer is coming spring i just want spring there's like buds on the trees though i saw that coming i did it was 70 degrees today oh my gosh it's beautiful we actually got hot yeah we actually got hot we all had to come back after our day out and shower because we were all sweaty yeah (laughs) i love that that's the best that's the best kind of day (laughs) i hope my kids like Uh, feel better soon so we can actually go do something me too i miss you guys I think Ledger's on the up. I feel like Ledger probably looks like a different human than the last time I saw him. <laughs> probably. I haven't seen him in so Can long. Can we just talk about how he decided he's just going to stick his tongue out in the little tiniest <laughs> tip of his tongue? He just, <laughs> le- it's just always out and he knows it's like silly. Like, you know when they start getting like a yeah. little personality where he just like, yeah. I don't know, like he'll, 
<laughs> he'll like wake up first thing in the morning and it's like he's been waking up at like 5 30 he'll like pop off the boob and i'll kind of keep trying to like put him back on like mm-hmm. no go back to sleep i'm, I'm not ready sleep. i'm not ready i'm not ready <laughs> and he'll just start looking at the at the ceiling and just like cooing he's like huh, huh, and he like starts messing with like different pitches of his voice like yeah. exhaling and i'm like dude and then I just like look at him and he just like looks at me and it's just like funny. Yeah. Like he's just hilarious. But I'm like, no, you're just a baby. And Lily's almost 10 months old. She's no. almost a freaking year old. She's all. Yeah. She's almost one. She it's wild. It is wild. How in the last Wait, month. Wait, no. Is she not 11 months old? No, she's almost 10 months old. She'll be 10 months on the 7th. Oh, yeah. And then we've got May. <laughs> okay. I was like, uh, May, she's, she's almost. Yeah. And she's almost 10. And she's. I it's she's coming like into her own personality though over like the last month and she straight up walking and she is mischievous (laughs) she is very she will like wait until I'm looking at her Uh and then she'll do whatever she knows she's not supposed Uh to do and then she laughs about it and runs like (laughs) either she scoots or runs as fast as she can and I'm chasing her down and she's laughing the whole time she's Uh a mischievous oh my god Noah was not mischievous so this is very fun (laughs) that's like that's how my parents describe me as a baby they're like you just had this little like look in your eyes yeah, you're like, just like knew I'm you were up to, to no something. good yeah <laughs> oh i love that i love that babies are so fun and every single minute that like he gets bigger i'm like please lord let this like not be the last time i, I hold know. a little baby i know i know <sighs> please let there be more for mm-hmm. some reason some ways i've got to find a, a couple therapist if you are listening to this and you mm-hmm. know a couple therapist in the parker area yeah we because, both need that yes brady still has so much trauma from yeah. my three births mm-hmm. and um, I just know that this is not the end mm-hmm. of my children. So mm-hmm. <laughs> if you have somebody, mm-hmm. I'll never get him into therapy alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I need a couple therapists. I know. <laughs> I know. Why is that like so hard to find? I feel like therapy in general, like yeah. that's the biggest people's biggest deterrent to it. It's I know. Like, and I've talked to Brady about that. Yeah. Like, and he's openly shared like, yeah, I would totally go do it with you. But doing it by myself feels like mm-hmm. I'm failing, mm-hmm. which is like, I think such like an, I don't know. Well, I think we're the first generation that's like trying to normalize it. Yeah. I feel like Gen Z is even better at normalizing it. Yeah. But the generation above us, yes, Gen if you X. were going, if you were going to therapy, there was something horribly wrong yes. with you. Yes. And then the boomers yes. were like, if you're Absolutely going to therapy, not. you are like on death's bed, yeah. right? Yeah. Like death row. No. And I think there's also something to say about being a man, being a sole provider, yeah. being an entrepreneur, like having all this weight on your shoulders, like mm-hmm the thought of cracking is probably really scary. Yeah. Cause you can't really walk into one of those places and not be emotional. Sh- yeah. Have mm-hmm. to like sh- be vulnerable. Yeah. And share. Mm-hmm. I know. Okay. Well, yeah, should we end? I'm sure we'll find a good one. Maybe we can share. Yeah. I still need to go get my hair done. We've gotten lots of responses <laughs> to that. So couples therapist, <laughs> Christian <laughs> couples <Help> therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They do need to be a Christian. Cause otherwise I feel like, yeah, I've wasted time on therapists that aren't. And it's like, okay, they totally are smart. They totally know what they're talking yeah. about. But, like, you can only take they their wisdom so far. Yeah, they don't know before spiritual. Before you're like, okay. When that's a huge part of your life. You absolutely need somebody yeah. who can touch on that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just look at our book club. Go join the I book know. club page. Um, make sure you're following us on Instagram, the Mother Collective Co. Make mm-hmm. sure you have hit the plus button on this podcast so that you're following. And if you haven't left us a review, we would love to hear from you. Yeah. To know, um, I forget about that. Yeah, to know the good things. If it's bad, just message us because we don't want that on the internet. <laughs> I'm not yeah, whoever gave us our on. one two star <laughs> review, can you please uh... go back? <laughs> All right, see you guys next week. Hopefully, hopefully we'll oh, see. You next I just week. gotta.